You're listening to the Online Marketing Made Easy Podcast, episode number 202. Welcome to the Online Marketing Made Easy Podcast. Business advice so easy, you'll feel like you're cheating. And now your host, Amy Porterfield. Well, hey there. Welcome back to another episode of the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast. I'm your host, Amy Porterfield, and today we are talking all things Facebook groups. So that Facebook algorithm, it can get a little tricky at times, right? And now that Facebook has let us all know that they're going to focus on meaningful social interactions in our news feeds, things feel even trickier, to be quite honest, uh, maybe even confusing. So for me, I started to think about Facebook groups in a whole different way. I believe that Facebook groups are the key to building the kind of communities that not only will allow us to connect with our audience and our students and our clients even more, but also Facebook is rewarding those connections inside of groups. They've actually come out to say that they will be showing Posts from groups more often in the news feeds than, let's say, posts from our Facebook pages for our businesses. Groups are where it's at, which is exactly why I wanted to bring on Facebook groups expert Caitlin Batcher. Now, Caitlin has grown her own free closed Facebook group, Social Boss with Caitlin Batcher, to more than 30,000 members in just three years. She also has a best-selling course called the Fab Facebook Group System. I thought she would be the perfect person to answer the question I get asked all the time from my students. How do I boost engagement in my free Facebook group or even my student-only course Facebook group when I'm starting from zero, when there's hardly anybody in my Facebook group to actually get engagement from? So if you've ever wondered this, you, my friend, are listening to the perfect episode. I'll cover all of this in my conversation with Caitlin. Now, before we get there, I wanted to let you know that this episode is sponsored by Courses That Convert, my online training program that teaches you how to create an online course from start to finish. This is one of my best-selling courses where I get into all the details, the nuts and bolts. I don't leave anything out so you know exactly what it takes to create your own online training course and launch it. So if you want to learn more about creating your own course, I have a free masterclass called How to Confidently Create Your First Online Course in 60 Days. To check out my free class, go to amyporterfield.com forward slash courses. That's amyporterfield.com forward slash courses. All right, I won't make you wait any longer. Let's go ahead and dive into my conversation with Caitlin Batcher. Caitlin, thank you so very much for being on the show. I'm excited to have you here. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. We've got so much great stuff to cover. But before we get there, for those of my listeners who don't yet know you, tell me a little bit about yourself and what you're all about. My name is Caitlin Batcher, (laughs) and I've been doing social media marketing for over three years now. I started out doing actually freelancing as a social media manager when my daughter was about two years old, and right now she is six years old in kindergarten, and I live here in San Francisco with my daughter and my husband. And what do you do in your business now? Because you're not doing social media consulting. That's right. So right now I'm selling online courses and I also just started a group coaching program. And you primarily focus on Facebook groups. So I want to ask you before we really get into all the questions around Facebook group engagement and how to make them work. My question is why Facebook groups and why did you decide only Facebook groups? Because you've kind of got an interesting story around that. Yeah, well, it's funny because The short answer is that my Facebook group was the number one reason why my business grew so quickly. When I first started out, I was selling courses about Instagram and other platforms like Pinterest, but the social media platform that was bringing me the most revenue was my Facebook group. And I think that's because I really used my group as a tool to understand 
exactly what my market wanted, how they wanted it, and why they wanted it. And there's really a level of intimacy that's developed in groups that it really just can't be replicated on any other platform that I've ever seen. As a new business owner, it was incredibly important that I build my own community and connect with them in a meaningful way. Now, I have a question for you because in the intro, I talked about this, but we're going to talk about Facebook groups that are tied to your paid courses and free Facebook communities that are tied to your bigger messaging and brand. So in the beginning, when you talked about this being your number one social platform that worked for you, that was a free Facebook community, correct? Yes, that's exactly right. Now, at the time, I was also spending time, you know, in other people's Facebook groups, getting known that way. But ultimately, I wanted to get to know people in other Facebook groups and then bring them into my own community where I could start to foster a relationship there. Yes, for sure. Okay, keep going. So one of the things that I see a lot of entrepreneurs kind of miss the mark on is that they spend time developing products and services for other people's communities, right? And you've probably seen this too. If you're in someone else's Facebook group, someone comes in and says like, hey, what are you guys struggling with when it comes to this or that or whatever? And the problem is that your intentions are correct in that, you know, you definitely do want to ask those kinds of questions, but you're not asking them to your own community. You're asking them to someone else's community. And the truth is, there is no shortcut. If you want to make it an online business, you need your own community. And it's really important to create products and programs that are going to benefit them. You don't want to create stuff that is going to benefit someone else's community. That doesn't make any sense. For sure. Definitely. So you found that creating your own community, you started to learn about what people wanted from you and you had more of a personal connection. So you could ask the right questions and, and really get in there, but also you have a unique business. And this is one reason why I wanted you to come on the show. I know we're going to talk about Facebook groups, but you have built a million dollar business. And am I right to say that you have just one course? Yes, that is correct. So we need to talk about that. Okay, let's talk about this. And the reason why I'm excited to talk about this, Amy, is because it actually has a lot to do with you. What? And and something that you mentioned on one of your older podcasts. Okay. So I don't know if you remember, there was, I don't remember the title of the podcast, but there was a podcast where you were talking about how to know if you are ready to start a new course. Yes. And your advice was to give it a year, at least. I think you might've even said like 18 months, I right? Think you said like 12 to 18 months. And at the time that was mind blowing for me because I felt like the only way that I could create more revenue in my online course business was to continue to create more courses. And while that makes sense on the surface, what happens is that you end up with all of these different funnels to manage, all of these different communities to manage. And when you're just getting started, you don't have the team to do that. Now, obviously, as like right now, I have a new program coming out. So as your business matures, I think it's great to add additional courses and streams of revenue and stuff. Absolutely. But you need to get really good at selling one thing first. Because once you totally nail that, the rest is going to be easy, right? Uh, Like you really have to hone your selling skills. And that's something a lot of people don't do. They just hop from project to project. It's so true. And you hit it on the head. If you could just wait and perfect your selling process with one course, you validate it, you get some feedback in the beginning, like, okay, this is going to sell. It might not go out of the gate with millions, but in the beginning, you're like, there's something here. Then you perfect your marketing, your messaging, you perfect the training course, all of the ingredients in there, and you continue to launch it. And you're right. That literally sets the stage with how you launch and you don't have to flip from one course to another because that changes everything when you do that. And there's this popular misconception out there that 
that a sign that you've made it and that your course has legs is if you knock it out of the park, your very first launch. And I don't about, I don't know about you, but I have not found this to be true <laughs> I agree. at all. I mean, I can tell you honestly, when I first launched this, so it's been 18 months now since my first launch of this particular program. And when I first launched it, I made about $20,000. That may sound good to some people, but for me and the level of business that I was in, that was breaking even. Yeah. So the very first time that I launched it, I made $20,000 and I was completely devastated, mm -hmm. to be honest. I thought, you know, this is like my email list was big. I had a big community. I was convinced that this was going to be my first six figure launch. My team was rooting for it. And we made $20,000. And for an entire day, I just cried in my oh, bed. Oh. And I mean, I just, I was like, you know what? I just need to go all in and have a day to completely <laughs> mope. <laughs> I hear you. Like, you know, eat ice cream in bed, uh -huh. feel bad about it. And then the next day I was like, well, we're going to turn this around. <laughs> and so I remember going into Slack and I gave my team the news and they were disappointed. But I said, look, this is just the beginning. We're going to relaunch this thing in two months. Like, here we go. And so pretty much, you know, my main focus at that time was to really dig into the students that I had and just give my all to them to ensure that they were able to feel supported and get great results. And a big part of that was the course Facebook group that I had going. And by doing that, we were able to launch two months later, this time without Facebook ads, because let's be honest, I didn't have money to spend on ads at the time. <laughs> and we were able to go from that $20,000 launch with ads to a $60,000 launch just two months later without any ads. Wow. Then a few months after that, I had a launch where it was about $167,000. And then a few months after that, I turned it into an evergreen funnel that generates six figures each month. Okay. I need to stop you. That's okay. exactly what she said, guys. When I heard this, I was like, what? <laughs> six figures every single month. And this girl's legit. I'm in a mastermind with her. I know these things. And when I first heard that a couple months ago, I like needed her to repeat it to me. It's incredible. Most people don't get there that quickly, but this is what's so huge. And I know we're off topic of Facebook groups and we're going to get yeah. there in a moment. However, most people, I think what, cause I've seen it happen with student after student mm -hmm. is that they do that first launch and they feel like that wasn't so great. And they have their cry in bed with their ice cream. We've all been there, but then they don't get up the next morning and say, we are going to launch this again. What typically happens is I need a different kind of course. I need to sell it differently. I need to put it into a different type of platform or whatever. But no, you said we're launching this course again. We're making it better. And then you went on for bigger and bigger and now evergreen. So kudos to you for sticking it out because that is exactly what I did with Profit Lab and it's a game changer. Well, it's funny because I remember at the time when I was starting to do this, going all in with one product thing, there was a little bit of fear and resistance yes. to that, right? Yes. And and even some of my friends were like, uh, that sounds kind of crazy. I don't know if that's such a good idea. <laughs> um, but I was like, I'm pretty sure I gave you as an example because I, I said, guys, don't you remember Amy Porterfield when she first started, she was known for Facebook ads and like, yeah. that was her thing. Yeah. That's what she was known for. She had that one thing. And now look, she has other different offers and that's fine, but I need to get known for one thing. And girl, you have been known for that. I mean, Facebook <laughs> groups, when I think Facebook groups, I instantly think of you. And that's why I wanted you to come on the show because you really know your stuff. And what I love is you don't just know your stuff, but you've proven it with your own groups right. and your own community. Okay. So that's a, a good way to bring us back because lately Facebook came out with some big news, although we all expected it and we're already feeling it about the change in the algorithms and the push to more personal conversations and getting those posts out to friends and family more than businesses. And this was a really big buzz inside my own private Facebook group. And so now that we know what Facebook is moving toward, why do you think Facebook groups are more important than ever? Well, Mark Zuckerberg himself has said that people will begin to see more content in their news feeds from friends, family, and groups. So 
basically your ticket to showing up in your ideal customer's newsfeed is to get a Facebook group. That's the way that you're going to stay top of mind for your audience. So true. So if you're a business owner struggling to get seen on Facebook, you're saying definitely check out Facebook groups. Yes, absolutely. It's not really a question of, oh, should I do a Facebook group? This might be fun. If you have a Facebook page, there's no reason why you cannot have a Facebook group. And a lot of people, like they, they kind of think about Facebook groups in a backwards way. So they have this belief that, oh, in order to start a Facebook group, First, I need to build my email list, build a huge community, get famous, <laughs> you know, be well known, and then I'll start a Facebook group. When in reality, your Facebook group can be used as a tool to build your email list. Now, it's not a replacement for your email list. Email list, of course, we all need an email list. But what I'm suggesting is that there are techniques that you can use inside of your Facebook group to actually get new, fresh people that have no idea who you are inside of your community. And then they'll be a lot more likely to opt into something once they're in your Facebook group. Because I mean, the best way that I can describe it is your Facebook group is like a microwave. (laughs) Like you're, you know, it it takes leads from cold to hot really (laughs) fast. Yes, And your Facebook page, you know, it's like boiling water, the old fashioned way. Like when you're trying to make spaghetti and it takes, you know, 10 minutes to get the water to boil and then you end up cooking the noodles for less than that. But (laughs) in any case, this is really going to help get your leads warmed up quickly. Okay. So here's a question for you. If we're just talking about Facebook communities right now, I want to know how do you treat your Facebook page differently than your group? Like, what are you doing on, I get this question all the time. What are you doing on your Facebook page? If the action and the good stuff is happening in your free community. So I like to think of my Facebook page as a billboard. (laughs) So that's kind of where I'm pushing out content. I'm pushing my YouTube videos there. I'm pushing, you know, my blog posts to my page. And I'm also pushing invitations to join my Facebook group because the conversation is going to happen inside your Facebook group. So you want to make an intentional effort to pull people from your page into your group. Gotcha. Okay, fantastic. I love that. That's a really simple way to look at it. Okay, so I'm going to break this up into two sections. Section one is going to be all about closed free groups. So this is that free community that Caitlin and I have been talking about from the get-go. In part two of this, we are going to talk about Facebook groups for courses. And so it's a different opportunity there. And I want to make sure we have two different conversations about that because I think there are nuances in both. So for part one, we're talking about closed free groups, those free communities. And the first question I have for you about those is there's this great feature where you can ask questions before people are allowed into your group because a closed group means they have to request access to be in the group. So when they request access, you get to ask them questions. What kind of questions are you asking them? Okay. So Here's what everyone needs to know right now. When you are creating questions for your new members to ask, you need to use this as an opportunity to get your members to take action. I love the training you, in the background. It's like very dramatic. To for a <laughs> no, just keep going. It's so okay, good. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> God's <Lord. laughs> Okay. Anyway, the very first question that I ask is have you downloaded your free copy of the Facebook group host roadmap from my website, caitlinbatcher.com? Now, I don't care whether they've downloaded it or not. It makes no difference to me. But the most popular reply that I get is not yet, but I'm heading over there now. So the purpose of the question is to remind those who have signed up for it, for the roadmap to read it, and to let new people that are joining my group know that it exists. Awesome. That's so good. So the very first question you ask them is something around, have you taken this action? Yes, gotcha. Exactly. Okay. And that's something that everyone can do. Now, the second question I ask is, do you currently have a Facebook group? And again, whether they say yes or no makes no difference to me. I know that 50% of my students in my Facebook group program have a group and the other 50% do not have a group yet. So the purpose of this question is to remind them of the group topic. So 
I don't want people coming into this group and starting to ask questions about blogging or Instagram. The focus is Facebook groups. And I want them to know that from the get-go. That's good. So it kind of frames their experience coming into the group. Awesome. Okay. Now, the third question is, how did you find this group? So I don't have, I know some people screenshot answers and then save them somewhere and file them away. I don't know. I don't do any of that. (laughs) Okay. Because just for the record, I learned this too, that I just opened up a new group and you ask these questions. The minute you accept them, their responses go away. Yeah. Which Facebook needs to change that. Come on. I know. I totally agree. And I wonder, I mean, I feel like a change to that would be coming in the future. Right. I feel like that's a change. Yeah. But in any case, I want to know where my group is being promoted. So sometimes my group will get mentioned in someone else's Facebook group or on someone's blog post. And I have no way of knowing unless I ask, because, you know, on your website, if someone mentions your blog, you get like traffic referrals from Google so you can see where they're coming from. With your Facebook group, you don't know where they're coming from. There's no way to track that. So I like to know that because it helps me know where my market is hanging out. Awesome. Okay. So you definitely want to take advantage of the opportunity to ask questions before people are given access into your group. And we call it a closed group because will you explain a closed group just so everyone understands what that is? Yeah, sure. So the the difference between a closed group and a public group is that in a public group, everyone's posts and comments inside of the group are visible. And in order to create a more intimate environment, you need to create a closed group so that there is kind of a gateway, right? People have to request to join and then they get access to all of the information. Great. And just that exclusivity in and of itself makes your group more attractive. So I highly recommend the closed group. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So moving on, I want you to talk about the biggest mistake you see group creators make. Okay. So I love this. Whenever I talk about this, especially with other content creators, they all make the same mistake. And the problem is that they're trying to elicit engagement from their Facebook group, but all they're doing is sharing tips and tricks. So if you think about it logically, if you're in a Facebook group and if someone publishes this big, juicy top 10 ways to make a vegan casserole or whatever, (laughs) you know, something like that, that's not really going to spark engagement other than a thank you or great post. Like, what are people going to write? You know, it's not a conversation and it's definitely okay to post something like that every now and again. But if that is all you're posting, it's basically recreating. You're doing the same thing in your group as you're already doing on your page. So A group is a way to really invite people into a conversation, right? You want to create kind of like, I call it like a conversational living room vibe where you're all just hanging out on your big comfy couches and talking about whatever topic your Facebook group is about, as opposed to look at me speaking on the stage as I present this information to you. you (laughs) Right. That's a great point because it's so much easier to just put articles out there and links to great things. And here's my latest podcast or whatever. But I think it's more work to think of those really engaging questions. Like, give me some examples of stuff you post in your group that gets you really good engagement. Okay. So one of my favorite questions that I like to share inside my Facebook group is personal content. So this is something that all of us really need to get in the habit of sharing inside of our Facebook groups. But this is great content that also can be repurposed into an email or a blog post or a video or whatever. But basically, it's a personal story about yourself or a question that you pose to the audience. So you want your audience to feel like you're really drawing them in. So I can give you an example. Okay. One of the most popular stories that I've shared inside of my group is called What I Learned from a Box of Mac and Cheese Today. Okay. (laughs) Okay. So I share this story of how my daughter went to a fancy private school where all the moms had these backyard gardens growing organic heirloom tomatoes. (laughs) And, you know, it was very 
like we don't do that here <laughs> at uh, Shea Batcher, that's for sure. <laughs> and so I was talking about how she went to this fancy preschool and there was a potluck and my husband signed up for macaroni and cheese and he came home with an actual like box of cracked <laughs> macaroni and cheese. <laughs> And when I saw that, I burst out laughing and I was just like, oh my gosh, you have got to be joking. Like, we are not bringing that. And he said, why? And I was like, everyone's going to laugh. Like, I'll be so embarrassed. All the moms will think I'm, you know, horrible, whatever. And he said, but this is her favorite. And he was totally right. And in that moment, I realized, wait a minute, I'm creating this dish for my daughter right? That's who matters the most. It doesn't matter what anyone else has to say. And as you create, this is what I said to my group, of course, as you create and market offers for your audience, you need to keep this in mind. Don't worry about what others are doing. Don't worry about what anyone else will say about it. You've got to remain focused on your ideal customers, give them exactly what they want and you'll win every time. Okay. This is so good. This is so so good. So you want to share a personal story and then kind of bridge it back over to a relevant topic. But there's so many universal pain points that we all experience, right? Like embarrassment, feeling left out, all of these different things. And so we all have short stories to share. And stuff like this is like this kind of thing really boosts engagement because people, first of all, a lot of people can have a story similar to this, you know, um, with their own kids in school or feeling weird around other moms or anything like that. So true. I mean, and here's the thing. I just kind of had this little aha moment that when you tell a story, a personal story, and you relate it back to some type of lesson that you learned and you wanted to share with your audience, that just organically sparks engagement because there's a lot of either me too, or, oh my gosh, that happened to me, but it was like this or whatever. It's almost like you don't have to ask a question. Stories ignite that engagement back and forth because they're so conversational. So I love that you do that. Now, also, one other thing is that whenever I share a picture of my dog, Scout, the engagement (laughs) goes through the roof. So you're right. It's just even the simple little things behind the scenes. I sometimes think Hobie, my husband's more popular than I am with my audience because I post about him and he gets all these likes. And I'm thinking the guy doesn't even have really a social media account, (laughs) not on Instagram, at least. So I, I do love this idea of letting them in, sharing the personal stuff and going the extra mile by telling the story. And the more you do it, the better storyteller you become. So it's just something you kind of have to do a few times and you'll start to feel more comfortable with it. But yes, love that. And you guys got to follow Caitlin and I'll link to all her stuff in the show notes because she does these stories really regularly. They're beautiful. I love watching her on Instagram, tell the stories and on Facebook. So even if you're not in her group, you're going to get a taste of that if you follow her on social. Okay. So There's another type of content that you encourage people to do in their free communities, and that is helpful content. So talk to me about that one. Okay. Now, the important thing to remember about this is that it needs to be bite-sized information. Okay. So you do not need to create, you know, people have content overwhelm. You don't have to create like a thousand word post for your Facebook group. You can take content that you've already created in your webinars, on your blog, on your podcast, in your emails. You can take content from there and repurpose it into a little post inside of your Facebook group. And it's really easy to even schedule this stuff, right? Like there's all kinds of scheduling tools. You can just pop this out in no time. Oh, so good. I like that. So, because when I saw this one about helpful content, I thought, yeah, but I thought we weren't supposed to be sharing the tips and tricks, but this kind of has a twist to it. Yeah. So, I mean, the thing is, if you want people to engage inside of your Facebook group, you need people to show up to your Facebook group. And let's be honest, the, you know, the number one reason why people want to show up is because They want to learn something, right? That's why initially they're, they're going there. And so you need to meet them where they're at. So you need to share content like this so that it's going to keep them coming back. But then you're also going to throw in stuff like personal stories where they're like, oh, wow, she's more than someone who just teaches me how to make vegan casseroles. (laughs) You know, she's a real person that I can relate to. 
Yes. Okay, good. I love that. Now I actually, my favorite one is your third type of content. So Mm -hmm. let's wrap it up with our content ideas for free Facebook communities with this third one. Talk to me about that one. Okay. So this is the type of content that I guarantee is missing from the groups of most of your listeners. This is something that a lot of people forget to post inside of their Facebook group. And this is the number one thing that's going to drive sales in your community. So I call this type of content, content that stirs desire. Now, it's really important that the content that you create inside of your group builds your authority, right? Just like you did with the helpful content and gets people to like you, just like you did with the personal stories. But it's also important that you're creating content that drives sales. So the big question is, how in the world do you create content that sells without being salesy? Because we've all been in those Facebook groups where it's like promotion after promotion after right. promotion. Yes. Nobody likes that, no. right? So the answer is that you stir their desire, which means that you grab people's attention and you make them curious to learn more. So this is sort of the opposite of the helpful content, right? Because the helpful content is a bite-sized, actionable step that someone can act on and get an immediate result. But this kind of content leaves people having even more questions, right? It, It makes them curious. So an easy way for you to do this inside of your own group is to talk about some myths. So you can go in and create a post called top three myths about blank and put it inside of your group, right? Now, when your members are reading these myths, their curiosity is going to be piqued. And you haven't, within those myths, you're not teaching someone how to do anything. All you're doing is getting their attention, piquing their curiosity, and making them want to learn more about what it is that you're selling. You have a really good example of this. Tell them about that example. So I have a blog post called Stop Believing These Lies About Hosting Your Facebook Group. And inside that post are three false beliefs that people have that keep them from starting their own group. So for example, one of the beliefs that people have is that you have to be really well known in your niche and have thousands of people on your email list before you start a Facebook group, which I know is complete garbage. Now, this connects with my community because many of them have that belief. And when I explain that you do not need to grow a huge email list in order to start a Facebook group, you don't need to do that because your group is going to grow your list for you. That piques their interest. Then I proceed to give an example from one of my students that grew her email list by a thousand people in 30 days as a direct result of following the program and taking specific actions inside of the group. So if you're listening right now, after hearing that, how do you feel, right? You're probably kind of curious and you're probably a little confused (laughs) and you want to learn more. And that's a good thing. That's how you want people to feel. Yes. Stirring that desire. Such great examples. I'm often asked about content examples and the fact that you just gave three really solid ones that you could use inside of a free community. Fantastic. So I'm going to review them real fast. The one we just went over, content that stirs desire. The other one is helpful content, but I feel like Caitlin put a twist on that. Remember, bite-sized. And maybe my favorite is the personal content, but use stories to actually talk about whatever it is that's going on and touch on some of those feelings and emotions and challenges that your audience is facing, but use stories to get the point across in different ways, which I thought is really, really important. Takes a little extra time, but goes so much further. Okay. So we are going to pivot now and we are going to talk about Facebook groups that you create for your paid courses. And the reason I wanted Caitlin to talk about this is because so many of my students inside of my programs will say, Amy, I want to create a 
course to sell. And I want to have a Facebook group as a bonus for when people buy that course. My fear is I've never sold the course. What if only 10 people buy, which could be a very real thing that happens. And then how do I get this community to engage with me if only 10 people are in the group? And then people have this fear like, and if only 10 people buy, I'm going to look like a loser because it's going to be obvious. Not many people bought if they're in this really small group. So I feel like we need to totally change the mindset around this and get into action action because a small group is not necessarily a bad thing. I feel like if you wow these 10 people, they will be customers for life and they'll continue to buy from you. So are you cool if we dive in there and kind of yeah, talk about definitely. this? Okay. Yeah. Go for mm-hmm. it. Okay. And again, the reason why this is so important to really get your students engaged inside of your group is because that's how your audience, is, that's how your customers are going to get results right? You're able to get them to follow through so that they can get the promised result. And one of the best ways to keep your students accountable is to embed an action step inside of the program. So So let me give you a little story about that. My husband, he's become really into meditation and he has an app on his phone called Headspace. And in that app, They have a built-in feature that prompts you to share your success on social media after you've reached a specific benchmark. So it's like, you've done 30 days of consecutive meditation. Share this on Facebook. My husband is always too embarrassed to share it, but (laughs) but he tells me about it. (laughs) Um, And so you can do the same kind of thing within your course. So when I first launched my Facebook group course, I needed a way to get people talking, right? And I also needed a way to check for understanding and make sure that people were interpreting my lessons correctly. So at the end of each lesson, I invited them to take an action step inside of my group. So for example, if there was a lesson on branding your group with a cover image, then they would have to go inside of the Facebook group and share their cover image. And nobody had to guess what to do because I told them exactly what to do. A lot of times your customers want to engage inside of your course group, but they don't know how. They don't know like what to do or what to say. So if you tell them and you give them something concrete to do, they're going to do it. Uh, So true. I love this. So bake these opportunities into your course. And this is something you want to think about as you're creating your course. Okay. Fantastic. All right. So your next course group strategy has to do with writing a series of emails to boost engagement. So tell me about that one. Okay. So this next step is really important because it's going to ensure that your students get better results from your program. So the tip is to create a nurture sequence. So a new customer nurture sequence is basically a series of automated emails that delivers motivation and encouragement to your students. Now, when I first started selling courses, I felt like these emails had to be content heavy. I imagined that in order for my students to get really great results, they needed more content, but this was not true, right? And again, it's going back to this thing as content creators, this is our love language. This is how we help naturally is by giving content (laughs) and, and giving and sharing information. But in this case, what people really needed was emotional support. Now, after they make a big investment, they need reassurance that they've made the right decision and they need to know that you really do care about their success. So my own customer nurture sequence really focuses on improving their mindset. So I do this in the very first email they get by calling out some of the emotions they may be experiencing. For example, the opening line is basically, whenever we start something new, we have a preconceived set of beliefs or ideas about the right way to do something. And when someone questions those beliefs, it can feel uneasy or even downright scary. So what I'm doing is, is I'm setting the stage that in order to get results for this program, you're going to have to try some new things and it might feel a little uncomfortable and that's okay. And that's normal. Right. And, you know, a lot of times when people come to you, they want to learn something new, but they're very stuck in their ways. They've been doing something one way for a very long time 
and it's not producing the results they want, which is why they purchased your course, but they're still feeling, it's still scary to make changes. And they might be a little bit unsure of like, well, will this really work for me? And so they need to get encouragement that this program does work. You can also, this is also an opportunity where you can share case studies too from other students who have had results, but they're like, oh, okay, you know, this really does work. Okay, that's great. (laughs) Okay, so this is awesome because this nurture sequence that you're talking about, it also is a huge help for refunds. Would you agree? yes. Yeah, totally, right? So think about it. When do refund requests typically come in? A few months in, right? Well, see, for me, a lot of times they come in right after they buy, like they'll oh, buy okay. it yes. and then they're, they're scared. Buyer's right? remorse, but, like, wait yeah, a second. Like, I, I don't know like, if I should have done this. Yeah, exactly. we see that too. They buy it and they haven't even opened the course. <laughs> they have not even opened the course, right. right? And it's so funny because when my customer service associate says, well, you know, we don't really offer refunds in this situation, but here's what I can do to help. They're so thankful. They're so grateful because they're able to feel supported, right? Yes. The reason they are requesting refunds is because they don't believe it will work for them. And so they don't even bother trying. And I don't know about you, but I feel like that is incredibly sad, oh, right? So sad. Here they, they have a proven step-by-step plan in front of them that solves the precise pain point that they've been struggling with forever and they don't even start. So this has nothing to do with your product, but it has everything to do with your customer's mindset. They're feeling overwhelmed. They're doubting their ability to get results. And the antidote for this overwhelm is connection. And the best way that you can do that is with a nurture sequence that provides support And that also gets them into your group ASAP. That's another thing. Get them into the group ASAP. So we do a nurture sequence. I teach how to do a nurture sequence inside of my courses that convert program. That's how important I think it is. I took a entire training video about it because getting people in action right away after they purchase is so important. So that very first email where we say, welcome to the program, log in to the program and get started. We also say, and introduce yourself immediately into the private Facebook group. Here's access. Exactly. And I love that you give them a clear step and it's easy. You're just like, introduce yourself, right? That's something anyone can do. Right. So it's super easy. You're exactly right. So I remember inside my webinars that convert program, one thing we did in the very beginning, I'm not sure if we still do it now, but I always say you need to have a game on song before you start your webinar. You've got to have your (laughs) earbuds in and minds don't stop believing from journey. I mean, I listen to it before every live webinar. So I said, okay, the first thing you do is you jump in there and you tell us your game on song. And that was fun because people started sharing their songs and we kind of made things even more interesting. So yeah, I love that. There's a lot of different things you could do. Okay. So your last tip for a paid Facebook group is maybe the most important one, because at least this is one that I subscribe to very consistently. And that is all about embracing video in your group. So can you talk to me about that? Yeah. So after someone buys your course, it's, important that you stay present inside of your group. And one of the best ways that I found to do it is with video. There's something so reassuring about seeing the course creator's face right there inside of your Facebook group. I like to do a monthly Q&A call the last Friday of each month inside of my course group. I like it to keep the same each month because then everyone can remember it. It's super simple. People submit their questions in advance. And I choose three or four questions that I think will benefit the whole group. So this part is really important. Now, if someone asks a random question that has nothing to do with Uh, the course, then it's it's best to skip it. You you don't want to go there. But when you're giving that Q&A call and going really deep, you know, into these three or four questions, as you're reading the comments during those videos, it just feels, it feels good. It feels like you have this live connection with the people that are actually trying to, you know, they're going through your course. And I feel like reading those comments also helps you improve the quality of your course. 
because you can go back and make changes to your course based on feedback that you get. For example, if everyone is asking the exact same question, you know, about lesson number two, then you can go back into lesson number two and you can add something that says, you know, and right now you may be wondering, blah, blah, blah. Well, here's the answer. Exactly. It it makes it more helpful because your course is a work in progress. People need to understand that it doesn't have to be this perfect, complete thing from the beginning. I mean, that would be great if it was. And obviously you want to give it your best shot and put your best into it. But over time, you're going to be able to make so many improvements to it. That's really going to benefit your students. Oh, million percent. I also had this unique situation where a student of mine reached out to me and she said, Amy, I don't have enough people in my group to get enough questions yet. Like there might be two or three questions and I want to do a weekly Facebook live in my group. And I said, okay, then do a hot seat. Take one person Mm -hmm. in that group and just wow them with drilling down into whatever it is the topic is of the group so that you can offer feedback and insight, but it could be valuable for everybody. So you just have to focus on one person because it's a small group. So if you're not ready for Q&A like Caitlin and I do, then you can definitely choose one person and drill down with a hot seat, which could be just as valuable. I love that hot seat idea. And I think it's great too, because once you do that hot seat, people that are watching are probably going to have follow-up questions about it. And so then those can be the questions for your next Q&A call. Oh, so true. So then you're starting to spark more engagement, which is what this episode is all about. Now, before I let you go, because so we we're going to wrap up part two, which is all about the paid Facebook groups. But I've got one last question for you that I know so many of my students are curious about. And the question is, how much time do you spend in your Facebook group? And is it different for a free community versus a paid course Facebook group? A hundred percent. Please do not spend all day long in your free Facebook group. <laughs> right. um, please do not do that. A free Facebook group is not a place where you need to be coaching or teaching people for free all day long. Now, we've been kind of covering some alternative content ideas that go beyond just helping people. But what I'd like for you to do is reframe your mindset that the best way that you can help someone is to get them inside of your paid products and programs. That's the best way. So when someone comes in asking for a Band-Aid, when in reality they have like a gaping wound, it's not doing them any favors to just give them a Band-Aid, right? And so what I like to do, because this is something that a lot of people encounter with their free groups is they say, well, what do I do if I have someone that comes in and they start asking me questions? And like, it's content that I cover in my course, but I also don't want to just be like, oh, we'll just go buy this. You know, that Mm -hmm. sounds a little weird. And what I like to encourage them to do is to ask questions in return. So start asking questions that help that member kind of get to the root of what the problem is so that they can understand that they have a much bigger problem than they believe that they do. Okay. Yeah, that's great. So in the free Facebook community asking questions, they're going to get to the point that they're like, wait a second, this is not just a Band-Aid kind of situation. I need a bigger solution. And then of course, they're going to start to know about the bigger solution as they're in your Facebook group and you start telling people about your programs. Okay. But how about, so I think one time I saw you say like 20 minutes a day, or am I just making that up? No, that's totally right. Okay. 20 minutes a day, but what about a paid course? Is it the same thing for you? I think it's the same thing. I mean, here's the deal. When you have a paid course, it's also a community. So once you, when you're first starting out and you just have a few members inside of your course Facebook group, you're going to be able to pretty much answer everyone's questions within 20 minutes. But what's going to happen is as you get more and more students in there, your other students are going to help you out. Like they're going to answer a lot of the questions for you because they've already been in your course and they already know how to help people. So for me, I would say, yeah, that 20, I think 20 minutes a day is plenty inside of a group. Totally. Um, I think it's enough. And really 
I think that you want to manage your time, but you also don't want to make it about the time, like get a system together and, and know how you want to support and the different ways you want to engage. And once it starts to feel like there's some flow there, I think it becomes less overwhelming for the course creator or the group creator. Yeah. Yeah. So get a system down. Okay. Caitlin, Thank you so very much for being on the show. We have covered so much ground. I'm so excited to release this to my listeners because this is a question that has come up over and over again. So my final question is, where can listeners learn more about you? Well, definitely head over to my website, caitlinbatcher.com. And there's lots of goodies over there that will teach you even more about Facebook groups. Awesome. I can't wait for them to check you out. Thank you so very much for being here. Thank you, Amy. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this conversation with Caitlin as much as I have. When it comes to Facebook groups, Caitlin's your girl. I'm going to post a link to her website in my show notes if you want to check her out even more. Now, it's funny that we're talking about Facebook groups because I have a really cool announcement for you. I'm recording the closing of this podcast weeks after I recorded with Caitlin. The reason for that is I lost my voice right around the time I did the interview with Caitlin. And so I had to go back and record some intros and outros separately. So since interviewing Caitlin, I have launched a brand new Facebook group called the Online Marketing Made Easy Podcast Community. It's a Facebook group for the listeners of this podcast, and we have been having so much fun. If you never want to miss an episode, or if you enjoy the behind the scenes making of the episodes, because I started to share some of those, or if you just want to be with a community of go-getters, people that are building their businesses online, they're adding insights and smart questions and starting great conversations in the group. It really is a valuable place to be. So if you want to join us, go to amyporterfield.com forward slash podcast community, amyporterfield.com forward slash podcast community. And when you go there, you just have to request access into our Facebook group. Within 24 hours, we will let you in and you can jump in on the conversation. I can't wait to see you over there. We're having a blast and I'd love for you to join us. Okay, so there you have it. I cannot wait to connect with you next week. Until then, make it a great week. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast at www.amyporterfield.com. 